By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back at the Camel Trophy, the gentleman's old school magic tournament held in Arnhem, the Netherlands. And what does that mean, a gentleman's tournament? It means that we're not playing with Mind Twist or Library of Alexandria today, so those cards will not see any action in today's tournament. And we have reached round number two. And in round number two, we see a deck that we also saw in round one. We have the beautiful Fujurn Enchantress deck back on the channel a deck played by Peter and he's taking on Arno and Arno is playing a pink weenie deck now before I jump into the deck text I would first like to point out that as always you can also choose to go to the games first skip the deck text section the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below there you will find several timestamps including a timestamp that's uh, that reads MTG games Click on MTG Games, it'll take you straight to the action. As for now, I'm going to continue with the deck decks, and I'm going to start with the deck of Peter. And here we see the deck of Peter. So this is for Jurn Enchantress, right? Combined with mainly blue, we also see a little bit of red, and even in the sideboard, we see some white. So that's quite interesting. Let's first kind of focus on what he wants to do here. So for Jurn Enchantress, two green and one to cast for an O2. Beautiful creature, beautiful art. Uh, but it also has a useful ability because when you cast an enchantment, you get to draw a card, which is quite nice. So if you play, for example, your Sylvan Library, you get to draw a card. Talking about Sylvan Library, it's a card that goes together quite well with Fajoran Enchantress because it allows you to look at the top three cards, put them in order. So that means that you're going to put an enchantment on top, draw the enchantment, play the enchantment, draw another card. And the more cards you draw, of course, the better the Sylvan gets because then next turn, you probably get to see three completely new cards Again, you're going to put those enchantments at the top and kind of create your own drawing engine. Now, this card uh, goes together quite well with another enchantment here, Dark Heart of the Wood. Dark Heart of the Wood, one green and one black, a card from the dark. If you sacrifice a forest, you gain three life. Now, this is really a control deck, right? You want to get your card draw engine going. You know, you want to draw into your burn spells. You want to start copying your Fuduran Enchantress. You want to do all these shenanigans. That means you need time. Life gain equals time, right? So if Peter can find his Dark Heart of the Wood quite early in the game in combination with an Enchantress, he can start sacking forests, drawing cards, gain some life, you know. And I think then he's in a good position. If he cannot, you know, then it's going to get difficult for him. What I also like in this deck is that he is playing Channel Fireball. But what he can also do is he can use his channel to just gain a lot of, just hurt himself basically, lose a lot of life. Why would you want to do that? Because he's also playing Mirror Universe. So let's say he's in a situation where he's got a Brain Geyser and a channel. He could kind of draw a lot of cards, hurt himself a lot, and then next turn use his Mirror Universe and change life totals. Like that would be an ideal scenario for him. That would be really funny if you could pull that off. Um, and then in the sideboard, which is quite interesting, he is playing with some white card so he's playing circle of protection red which of course is a problem for him like this deck if it has to deal with an earthquake that's going to be disastrous and of course an aggressive red deck like a lot of burn that's going to be quite hard for Peter to uh, to handle with he really wants to go that control route so I get it that he put a circle of protection red there and also a circle of protection black against uh, I guess against the uh, the aggro black decks as well and because you've got access to city of brass and you've got access to four birds of paradise there could be a scenario where you're able to kind of, you know, get white mana and play these cards because they only have white, one white in their casting cost anyway. So, you know, overall, I think Peter's deck is um, it's really funny. It's looking good. It's looking okay. And uh, I, I, I always look forward to seeing Enchantress because you don't see it that often. And here we see the deck of Arno, so really here a pink weenie deck where we can of course see that white is the dominant color, so that the backbone of this deck, the base is really that white weenie. We see Savannah Lines, Tundra Wolves, we see White Knights, we see Thunder Spirit, so there's really a first strike theme going on here that works of course great with the Jihad, but also with the Crusades in this deck, you know, they're going to pump those creatures, making first strike even better. And then we also see, of course, two beautiful Sarah Angels and one Mesa Pegasus. And what's really interesting, a card that catches my eye straight away is that one Righteousness in the deck. It doesn't make any sense, you know, so I'm sure, Arno, that you have a story with this card. It is a beautiful signed copy. It looks like a fourth edition copy. So Righteousness is actually a rare. It's an instant and it gets target blocking creature plus seven plus seven. Now, why do I think it's kind of out of character for this deck? Well, that's quite simple. This deck wants to attack, right? It is super aggressive. It doesn't want to block. 
But I guess Righteousness works together quite well with Sarah Angel because Sarah Angel, you don't have to tap into a tech, so you can attack with it and also keep it at home at the same time as a blocker. So hopefully, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, we're going to see Righteousness in action. That would be absolutely awesome. Now, uh, we also have, of course, some red cards in this deck. I think red is a great addition to White Weenie strategy for the simple reason that it gives you access to direct damage. You know, it, it, I'm sure it's happened to you as well. It's happened to me playing green. Well, in green, at least you've got a hurricane. But playing mono green, mono white, and you want to finish your opponent. Your opponent's really low on life, but you just cannot find any direct damage and your opponent ends up winning. Because when you play aggro, it's kind of like a race, right? You want to punch early on. You want short games. And then, you know, direct damage is a great way to finish it. Even if your opponent just done two and you're kind of taking punches yourself, your opponent has regained control, you know, okay, if I draw that one bolt, and of course there are lightning bolts in this deck, I can win the game. Now, besides the bolts, we also see a fireball in the deck, and we see some very interesting one-offs here. We see Earthbind, beautiful art. Again, I think it's in here just because Arno loves this card for some reason. I like it too, I love the art. I also like what it does, it's really a hippie killer. But again, it doesn't really fit in this deck, right? But it's super cool to see it. Uh, we see Fisher here as well, played main. So Fisher, two red and three to cast, destroy target land or creature. It's from the dark and it's an instant. I think this card is, is better than it seems. But again, for this deck, to me, it seems a little bit out of character because you need double red for that. All the other red spells here only have one red in their casting cost. And of course, it's a bit of a slower card, but still, it's a really good card, and it's a nice surprise. I do like that. When you play with some one-offs in your deck, it's really cool, because you're kind of spicing it up, and you're making it more difficult for your opponent to kind of predict what you're going to do. All of a sudden, there's a righteousness in the deck. I mean, nobody sees that coming. A Fisher, you know, an Earthbind, they do not see that coming. A card that makes more sense to me is, of course, the Wheel of Fortune, and also the Blood Moons. Blood Moon, one red and two, all non-basic lands turn into mountains. That could be golden here for Arno in this matchup. Remember, the Enchanter's deck is playing all the, all the colors, actually, if you include the white cards in the sideboard. And, you know, it highly depends on those multicolor cards. So if he can maybe target the... Um, there's actually no swords to plowshares in here. Wow. That is interesting. He's got the bolts, of course. But, wow, that's interesting. I guess swords is maybe a little bit counterproductive because you're giving life to your opponent. So that's interesting. I didn't notice it because I wanted to say one of the things that Arno could do is, you know, sorts the Birds of Paradise, and then that makes the Blood Moon a lot better. But I guess the Blood Moon, or sorry, the source is not in the deck. So what he could do, of course, is bolt the bird, you know, and then have those Blood Moons really matter in this matchup. Anyway, very interesting deck because, you know, it's Pink Weenie as we know it, but it's not like we know it because there are some interesting choices here made by Arno. So thank you, Arno, for playing this list today. And uh, like I said, he's taking on Pater with the Enchantress deck. We've seen that already. So that means we're ready. Let's go to round number two of the Camel Trophy. Game number one, here we go. So we have Arno on the play. You're sitting on the right with this pink weenie deck, starting with the Thunder Wolves, a 1-1 creature with first strike. He's taking on Pater, who's playing an Enchantress deck, four colors, and in the sideboard, actually the fifth color, that is white. So he's playing for Journey Enchantress with a lot of different colors, having kind of an ideal opening for him, finding that Birds of Paradise turn one. Obviously, mana fixing is important when you're playing with that many colors. Let's see what Arno can do. Maybe play out a white knight. If he can find a second white, for example. He is playing out another planes. Attacking first with the wolves. Pater dropping here to 19. And there's another tender wolves and a pass. Actually, not too bad for Pater. I mean, like a white knight would have been a bigger problem for him. He's going here with a mox emerald and a duel. So he's got four mana now, because he also has that Birds of Paradise. Can he find it for Jern and Chandra's taking back the Taiga, playing out a maze instead? Tapping three, there is a for Jern and Chandra's hitting the board. So that's the O2 creature that his deck is built around, right? He can draw a card every time he casts an enchantment. And if you're Arno, you really want to find a red source and a bolt to take care of this Enchantress. It's the complete engine of the deck. Okay, there's a mountain. And there's a bolt. So this is perfect by Arno. Now he can attack with both wolves, of course. Pater's probably going to send one back with the maze. He also plays with Crusades and Jihad, so probably doesn't have a Crusade in hand or else he would have played it in his first main. So one damage for Pater here, dropping to 18. We cannot see all the dice, unfortunately. And no other creatures played by Arno. I believe he's got two cards in hand now. There's another Birds of Paradise being played by Pater. And 
passing their turn here. It's hard to see the cards in hand here by Arno, I believe. He had three in hand, now he's got two in hand. Attacking again, taking one point of damage, dropping to 17. But this is not too bad for Peter. Remember, Arno is really the aggressor in this matchup and he's not really doing a great job. We see a power sink in hand there by Peter, playing a City of Brass passing the turn. I mean, Arno really needs another creature here. Or maybe a red and another fisher to take care of the maze. That would be quite good as well. There's a plateau. So he's got access to the double red. Also placed with Sarah Angel, which would be a really good five drop here. Tapping three. Are we going to see a Thunder Spirit? Ooh, that looks like it's a Blood Moon. There's a power sink though. Does mean he has to take another damage. Going to drop to 16 here. Okay, he's not going to use it. Yeah, that's a good decision, keeping the City of Brass untapped. He is taking one damage from the attack with the Tinder Wolves. This is unfortunate here. This would have been such a nice solution to that Mesa Viv and at the same time kind of cripple the mana base of Peter. But he was able to counter it with the Power Sink. So he's on 16 at the moment. There is a Dance of Many. What is he going to copy now? We cannot hear the players, unfortunately. I wonder if he's going to copy the Tundra Wolves or the Birds of Paradise. I mean, both kind of make sense and, you know, it doesn't really make sense because, yeah, I mean, the Tundra Wolves is okay. You can trade a wolf for wolf. And, of course, the Birds of Paradise is nice because you can kind of ramp, but it's not really what you want to do. Because, remember, Dance of Many also has an upkeep cost of 2 blue. So this is actually not too bad. There's a pass by Arno. So I guess he copied a Thunder Wolves here. And now he's got to pay that upkeep cost of two blue. And he's going to draw for turn. There's a Sylvan there in hand. He's going to attack here with the 1-1. That is cheeky. Attacking with the Thunder Wolves. He's going to tap. What is he going to do? Disenchant. So disenchanting the Dance of Many. There is a Sylvan. Oh, and I, I bet Arno is, is not happy now with his decision to disenchant at 1-1 one, one Wolves. Much rather would have had the disenchant for that Sylvan. Sylvan it can be so good in the deck of Peter. There's the attack. Again, one point of damage. So Peter dropping to 15. There is a Desert. On the side of Arno in a pass. But Arno's hand is empty and it's bad news for him. There we see a control magic. So he could, he could pick that for example. He's taking just one card it seems. So staying on 15. Tapping 3. There's a Fajorn Enchantress. Yeah, this is really good. Fajorn Enchantress with Sylvan. That is a good combination. I, I believe we saw that in the round 1 video as well. When those two cards hit the table. It was really good news for Peter. Tapping the two Birds of Paradise. There's a Time Walk. Wow. And this is the moment where you can see the control player really taking over the game. He, he gave Arno a lot of time, but Arno couldn't find the creatures. Did, of course, find that first bolt for the Enchantress. I think that was a really good moment for him. There we see a tap of six. What is he going to do? There's a copy artifact. Probably going to copy the Mox just to draw a card. And also playing... A control magic, so that means he can draw two cards. I mean, it's so good because if you're a painter, you already know what's on top of your library because of the Sylvan. And next turn, you can look at three new cards and you can, you know, put the enchantments at the top again. And you can continue drawing. It's just great. And this is really bad news for Arno. Also because Peter is still on 14, that's way too high. Like if your opponent's lower and taking over the control, you can kind of hope that you're going to draw into your fireball, your bolts and kind of win the game that way. But he's so high on life total still. So now Peter can look at the top three. I believe we see a forest and an island. The other, the third one, I cannot see. Going to pick here the dual land. Attacking here with the one one and killing it. Yeah. Oh, he missed it. He missed the desert. Oh, nice move by Arno. So Peter missing the desert here. 
and losing the wolves to it. He is able to deal one point of damage though, putting Arno on 19. One card in hand by Arno, overlooking the board. He's like, ah, oh, what to do? He knows he's not in a good spot, but it looks like Peter is kind of flooded, only finding lands. I believe he also has a land in hand. There's nothing really that he can do. So there's still a chance for Arno here. If he can, for example, draw into the Jihad, that would be great. It gets plus two, plus one to his creatures. He would have two, uh, he, he would have two, three, two Tundra Wolves. That would be a force to reckon with for Peter, but unfortunately for Arno, it's not meant to be just passing the turn again. Look at that, he's tapping to City of Brass. What is he gonna do? Oh, Mirror Universe. Oh, Mirror Universe, Sylvan Library. That is a really nice combination. Peter right now on 12. So he can take two extra cards, put himself on four. Remember, I believe he's got a Fireball maybe in hand there. Yes, it's a Fireball in hand for Peter. So he can just go down really low, exchange life totals, and then win the game. Is that what's gonna happen here? Arno still kind of stuck. His deck is not doing what it wants to do, and that is attacking and being aggressive. So there's this pass turn, untap, upkeep, and then the draw. So he cannot switch life totals because Mirror Universe, you can only use... Oh, he's going to do it already, it seems. So he's going to switch life totals. He's on 10. So that means Arno's going to drop to 10. Peter's going to go up to 19. It must have been tempting for Peter to wait another round and take like extra cards from the Sylvan. But he's got a lot of mana, of course. What is he going to do here? Tapping two. There's a Demonic Tutor. Remember, he is playing Channel Fireball in the deck and he's on a higher life total. He could play Channel Fireball here. Is he going to win it here with Channel Fireball? Demonic into channel, and there we go, channel fireball. And it is a really, really nice victory by Peter, really setting it up with that mirror universe, making sure he could exchange the life totals. It's just brilliant. And I have to say, Arno, you, you got the time from Peter. You know, you you just kind of, you can not find any creatures, but it's gotta make you hopeful that you're getting so much time. So I'm, I'm thinking in game two, you've got a much better chance. Also now, because you know uh, about the deck of Peter, you know what he's all up to, so that gives you additional info. Anyway, these players are gonna dive into their sideboards and we're gonna catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game number two, here we go. So we've got uh, Arno again on the play, just like in game one, of course, after losing that first one. And uh, just the planes, a pass. Look at this opener by Peter. Wow. Mox Emerald and then play a double Birds of Paradise. Again, a really good opener for him. That means he can ramp up. Probably going to see an Enchantress here. There's a Mesa Pegasus by Arno. He's not really finding the White Knights. There is a Demonic Tutor. What is he going to tutor for? I guess if he doesn't have an Enchantress, he's going to tutor for one. He's got other options. Also plays with Blue Power. Of course, he could go just go for Ancestral Recall. Brain Geyser could be a consideration depending on all the other mana ramp that maybe he has or hasn't in his deck. Lots of options here for him. Passing the turn, so he didn't have a land drop here. That's at least good news for Arno. Arno finding another planes. Can he put some more pressure on the board? There's a land tax, not great here. It just seems like Arno is not really finding the components that he needs. I mean, Thunder Spirit would be great. White Knight would be great. Just as a Van Alliance, any type of creature would have been at least helpful for Arno, put some more pressure on, but all he can find is this one land tax, which is not gonna help him with the double birds and the Mox Emerald on the side of Peter. And I now wonder what he's gonna play. What card did he look up with that uh, Demonic Tutor? There's a tap of two. Okay, there's a Sylvan Library. That is a good card, of course. There's a quick disenchant though by Arno, taking care of business. Drawing a card for turn. There's another Plains. Could attack here with the Pegasus. Only three cards in hand. There's the attack. Gonna put Peter on 18. But it's going too slow, you know? I mean, he needs to accelerate. 
Peter with the full grip of cards, but he's got some mana issues, it seems, and I guess he cannot find his Enchantress. That's the thing with these Enchantress decks. I mean, you do need your Fragile Enchantress if you want to make it work, and that's usually exactly the reason why these decks don't perform very much. Very well, I should say. There's a clone. Look at this, cloning of birds. Interesting choice. I wonder what he's got in hand that he want, wants five mana for. This makes me curious. Arno kind of stuck. I mean, he can attack again for just one with his flyer. That's what he does. Put, puts Peter here on 17. There's a disenchant taking care of the Mox Emeralds. So trying to kind of attack that mana base. That makes sense. Passing the turn. Tapping three. There's a Gloom from the sideboard. This is pretty problematic. Means that Arno's got to pay three more for all his white spells. And I'm saying it's problematic, but actually it's not that bad because Arno's got four planes. Exactly, there's number five. So he's pretty, you know, he's got the mana he needs. He can now cast a White Knight even uh, though the Gloom is on the table. I think the biggest problem for Arno here is that he's not finding any ammunition. And he just keeps on passing a turn. So despite the fact that Peter is not really drawing very well. I mean, he had a good opener with two birds, but after that he hasn't really been doing much. Uh, despite that, Peter is still very much alive. And Peter in the tank here. I guess he's got some options. Tapping four, five mana. What is he going to do? Okay, there's a, a recall. Look at that pitching, the disenchant and the wheel. Getting back the demonic and the sylvan. And Recall is such a good card, and it's doing a lot of work for Peter here. It's really setting up his next turn. Can Arno do something? Tapping everything here to play a Crusade. Of course, he's got to pay the extra three because of the Gloom. Does mean the Pegasus is now a 2 2. I mean, at least that kind of adds up. Peter is now on 14, I believe. Unfortunately, we cannot see all his dice. But I believe he's on uh, 14. So remember, Peter looked up the Demonic Tutor and the Sylvan. I mean, an ideal play for him would be land for Journey Enchantress, Sylvan, draw a card, right? But then, of course, he does need a land and a Fijurian Enchantress, so those chances are quite slim. Tapping two here. Are we going to see the Sylvan first? There's the Sylvan. Has mana now open for the Demonic as well? And this kind of makes sense that he waits here. Oh, he doesn't wait. What I wanted to say is he could choose to wait. Why? Next turn, because of the Sylvan, he can see three cards, put them in order. And then, then he can choose to play the Demonic or not, because the Demonic, of course, has that shuffle effect. And then the turn after, he's got three new cards to look at. And I'm pretty sure that's probably what um, uh, Peter was also considering, right? You kind of see him think, am I going to tap the birds, untap the birds? But he decided to tap the birds. So he, uh, he did look up the card. There's the attack by the Pegasus. So Peter dropping to 12. There's a Soul Ring. There's the untap by Peter looking at the top three here. Another Sylvan and a land. Look at that. There's a Mirror Universe. This is so annoying for Arno because Arno's on 20. The next turn, what's he going to do? Is he not going to attack? Is he going to keep Peter on 12? You know? I mean, if he's got a disenchant, it's simple. Disenchant to mirror attack. I mean, he's putting Arno in a difficult spot here. He's finding a, a plateau. So finally, he's got a red source. I would love to see, Arno, you casting an Earthbind on a Birds of Paradise. That would be awesome. Please do that. Tapping everything. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel? There's a Sarah Angel. And this is so typical. Finally, Arno finds the pressure that he wants. You know, that that's what his deck wants to do. But now, he doesn't want to attack anymore. Because Peter's got 12 life and he's got that Mirror Universe. I wonder now if Peter's going to draw two extra cards. No, he's going to exchange the life totals. Pretty aggressive. I kind of expected maybe Peter to wait a little bit longer. So Peter's now on 20. And uh, Arno is now on 12. Tapping the birds. Tapping the red. 
Dark Heart of the Wood. There's a channel. Are we going to see another channel fireball? Wow, this is crazy. This is the first time on the channel that I've seen somebody win two games with channel fireball. And again, with that mirror universe combination. I, I have to say, man, I tip my hat to you, Peter, man. That is, that is really cool. I guess he probably had a fireball or channel already in hand. And then use your demonic to find the other piece of the puzzle and of course again that mirror universe was great exchanging those life total totals because with the channel you want to be on a, a higher life total of course than your opponent but this was a really entertaining match unfortunately we're not going to see a game number three because you know it's 2-0 it happens sometimes but yeah i always love game three but it's not going to happen today the good news is that next week we have more magic for you from this tournament and then I have these two decks that are going to battle it out. They're pretty cool. So we have a, a reanimator strategy versus a deck that's built around transmutation. How cool is that? Anyway, if you want to see that battle, click that uh, subscribe button if you're not a subscriber yet so that you get informed whenever I post new content. And of course, like, share and comment on, these, uh, on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And if you're really a big fan and you want to help me out, consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash Talks. Have a look. You can already join our beautiful program for $1 a month and you get access to the Discord for that. And your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken What shall we do with the drunken